Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always, I want to stress always, causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Amen. He always makes us to triumph. Amen. We're talking from the subject matter of triumphant people. Amen. And I think I'm in the right crowd, praise the Lord, because all of you are triumphant people. Amen. Amen. You overcome every obstacle, praise God, by your faith. Amen. God causes you to triumph in everything. Amen, amen, amen. Now, I, I said on last week that a person with the spirit of a conqueror must confront and deal with the adversities we face and not run from them. Amen. Amen. We're more than conquerors, the Bible says. Amen. We don't run from our challenges. We run right through them. Amen. 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 Now, let's see how smart of a class you are. Amen. What, the, what was the definition on last week that I gave for the triumphant? And individuals, uh-huh. The, the strength of character, uh-huh. That enables them to keep what? Keep believing what? Keep planning what? Keep thinking and what? Keep working what? Despite difficult conditions, amen. I'll read it so they'll hear it on live stream. The triumphant people are individuals who possess the strength of character that enables them to, one, keep believing, two, to keep planning, three, to keep thinking, four, to keep working, to experience their full potential despite difficult conditions. Amen? Now, listen to me now. You got to keep planning as if you have what God promised you. Amen? Amen. You don't cut back just because you're having difficult situations. Praise the Lord. We believe in God. Amen. We keep believing. We keep planning. We keep working. We keep thinking. Why? Because we victorious folk. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And we said that trials and tests are just a part of life. Amen. On last week we said trials and tests are just a part of life. We all got to go through them. The, the fact that people, you know, people say in church, well, once you get saved, everything going to be all right. That's a lie. You got an adversary that's trying to kill you, trying to destroy you. Amen trying to cause havoc in your life. Praise the Lord. But you overcome it. Amen. God always gives you an exit. Praise the Lord. We found out. An uh, exit ramp to get off, off your challenge. Amen. And we found out on last week there were four reasons why people go through tests, trials, and challenges. First of all, human error. You might have made a decision that caused you to be in the situation that you're in. Then we said that you have satanic attack. We just found out. The Bible says that, look, the devil goes around seeking whom he may devour. Praise the Lord. He can't devour you at will. Amen. <laughs> he cannot devour you at will. You have authority over the devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, it's only those folk who don't know who they are in Christ Jesus that get devoured by the enemy. Amen. But when you know that God has given you authority, you power and dominion over your adversary. Look, he can't mess with you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we found out that the challenges of the times causes people to have tests and challenges in their lives. Amen. We found out last week that gas is high for everybody. Milk is high for everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then we found out that the call of God on our lives can cause us some tests, trials, and challenges. Amen. Now, go to, go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. That was just a quick review. You say, it sure was, Pastor. That was show quick. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Why? Look, I only got so much time. I got to get to my stuff. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, tonight, tonight, <clears throat> I want to really deal with how triumphant people deal with persecution. Somebody say persecution. Persecution means to harass, amen, or punish in a manner designed to injure, grieve, or afflict. Amen. Persecution means to harass or punish in a manner designed to injure, grieve, or afflict. Amen. But we must understand as triumphant people and those of us who are living right, you are going to face persecution. Harassment, punishment in a manner 
designed to injure you, grieve you, or afflict you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. When you're doing it right, you're living godly, you will suffer persecution. Second Timothy. You say, what, Pastor? I'm going to suffer persecution? Yes, you're going to suffer persecution. When you're doing it God's way, amen, when you're living triumphant, you will be persecuted. You will be persecuted, watch this now, by society. You will be persecuted by sinners. You will be persecuted by satanic counsel. And sometimes you'll be persecuted by the saints of God. Praise the Lord, amen. If you're living godly, <laughs> praise the Lord, amen. Where I told y'all to go? 2 Timothy chapter what? Chapter what? It's in three. I said three. Y'all should have picked that up in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at verse number 10. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 10. Look what Paul says. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. But out of all of my persecution, out of all my afflictions, out of, look, all of that stuff, God delivered me. Look what he says in verse 12, though. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, what? Okay, okay. Let's, let's, let's define that word shall. See, because shall means it's going to happen. Amen? It, it ain't a maybe. It ain't a 60-40. But he says, if you're living godly in Christ Jesus, you shall suffer persecution. Amen? But we are the triumphant, and so we recognize that as I'm going through my life, I shall suffer persecution. Amen, amen, amen. Go to Psalm 34. Psalms 34. Amen. Paul just said that out of them all, he's going to deliver us. Amen? Well, let's look at what the psalmist says. Psalms 34. Look at verse number 19. Psalms 34, well, let's start at verse number 17. Psalms 34, verse number 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord does what? Uh-oh. So God hear me, amen? And delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions, many, not any, but many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out, out of them all. Amen. So listen, that lets me know that it's not just going to be one affliction I'm going to go through. Amen. The Bible says it's going to be many. Amen. See, if, if you just prepare yourself as a saint of God, that look, I'm going to suffer persecution because I'm living godly. But, but listen, out of them all, God's going to deliver me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. How should I respond to persecution? <laughs> Amen. See, see, if they persecute you, that means that you must be doing something right. Okay, okay, now, now, let, let, me, let, let me make this statement. There's some persecution that come because of what you done done. Okay, I'm talking about the persecution that comes as a result of you living godly. Because you could be per persecuted by stuff you done done that God didn't tell you to do. <laughs> Praise the Lord, amen. That, that's just your crops coming up. Amen. You done sold that stuff, now, now it's coming up. You, you finna reap that harvest. Because the Bible said whatever you sow, that's what you're going to reap. So if you sow confusion and discord and all that kind of stuff, they're not persecuting you because of that. That's your crops coming up. Whoo, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm talking about those who, who are living godly. 
Amen. Doing it God's way. The Bible said we're going to suffer persecution, but now there's a way that I handle persecution. I don't fight back, Sister Robinson, when I'm being persecuted for godless, for God's sake. Amen. I don't fight back. I don't cuss nobody or anything like that. Praise God. Amen. But, but I, I do something based upon what the word of God says. Matthew chapter 5, look at verse number 10. That word blessed mean empowered to prosper. Are they which are persecuted for what? Righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed or empowered to prosper are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you, what? Falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So the Bible says, listen, if you're doing it God's way, rejoice. Amen. They, they will persecute you. Society will persecute you for your godly stance. When you tell folk that you don't agree with homosexuality, that you don't believe that men, men should marry men or women should marry women, look, you, you're going to get persecuted. Amen. Because once that, once, once that stuff start happening, guess what? The next thing folks going to want to do is marry an animal. I love my little poop, my little puppy. So I'm going to marry my puppy. That ain't God, amen? So, so you can get persecuted for, for God, godliness, amen? <laughs> Your godly stance. Amen? Now, 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 let me say this. God loves the homosexual. God loves the lesbian, but he doesn't like your ways. Praise the Lord, amen? It's just that simple, amen? All, look, all of us have a bit towards something. The Bible said all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have a bit. Amen. But he said, look, you got to get born again. Ooh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, so I, I can get persecuted for, for, for God, godliness. And, 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 and listen, he told me to rejoice and be exceeding glad. Now watch this. Go to Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. There is a reward that comes. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. There's a, there's a reward that comes. Mark chapter number 10. Woo, watch this. Look at verse number 28. Mark chapter number 10, verse number 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters a father, a mother, a wife, or children, or lands for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. And in the world to come, eternal life. So watch this now. When God begins to prosper you, watch this now, with houses, lands, brothers, sisters, children, and all that stuff. The Bible says that stuff come with persecution. Amen. God blesses you to build your house. You're going to have haters show up and wonder why you got to have so much house. I don't know why you need that much. I don't know why you need that many cars. I don't even know why you need that many suits. Whatever the case may be. Look, look that stuff come with it. Amen. The persecution come with it. Woo, praise the Lord. See, and that's why, that's why some folk don't want to be blessed. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why some folks don't want to be blessed. I don't want nobody talking about me. I, I, just, I just want to live my life in peace. Well, look, newsflash, newsflash, listen to me now. News, they're going to talk about you anyway. They're going to talk about you when you don't have it, or they're going to talk about you when you do. Amen? So, look, I done made up my mind. Let them talk about me when I got it all. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, look, 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 watch this now. Look. When, when you were on food stamps, they were talking about you. I know they were talking about my mama. Praise the Lord. We was on food stamps. Susie, Susie got seven kids on, on food stamps. But now when we got off that stuff and we started living the blessed life, they said, mm, look at them. Well, they weren't saying that when I was on eating government cheese. Had to heat up the, the knife, the butter knife to cut the cheese. Praise the Lord. They wasn't, they wasn't, they, look. 
That was some good cheese, though. I mean, praise the Lord. You put that thing in the toaster and let that, that cheese bubble up and brown on the top. Woo, Jesus. I think the Lord was coming. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but look, your prosperity comes with some persecution. Yes, it does. It comes with some persecution. So you just got to get ready because I'm believing for God to bless your socks off of you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm believing God that you will have more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. That's, that, that's my prayer for you, that you have more than enough. But now when the more than enough comes, the persecution is coming with it. Hallelujah. You got to look, I declare this whole church, all 10,000 of us have more than enough. Amen. Brother TJ, we have more than enough. Amen. 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 Look, they're going to talk. Look, look, when, when we hit the $10 million float, Amen. When we hit the $10 million flow, that thing going to come with some persecution. Hey, look, man, I, t today, today, I was just in meditation today, and I was just meditating on, on, on our new facility, and I, I was just walking through it in the corridors of my mind. That thing going to come with some persecution. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Yes, it will. Amen. Uh-huh. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And look, I haven't even, I haven't forgot about the, the wings of faith either. Amen. Amen. I, I, I have the picture on my wall of the jet. Praise the Lord. Because see, I believe God's going to give us assignments all over this world. Amen. All over this country. I, listen, I got, a, I, got a, I, I got a call about a month ago from a pastor in New Jersey. Didn't know me from Adam. Called me and we began a conversation. And uh, so we've been talking, dialoguing back and forth. Amen. And so he said, Sharp, I got to get you up here to New Jersey, man. There's something about you. I just got to get you up here to New Jersey. Well, listen, it, look, it would be better if, I, if we had the jet and I could just fly directly there. I don't have to take my shoes off. I don't have to take none of my clothes off. Praise the Lord. I can just go straight to the jet, get on the jet, fly to New Jersey, do what God told me to do, and then come right back. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Now, now, that thing going to come with some persecution. Who do they think they are with a jet? Yeah. They don't need no jet. Praise the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They gonna have, yeah, I, I got to bring the praise team with me. I got to bring the prayer team with me. Praise the Lord. I got I to bring some folk with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. But that thing will come with persecution. I'm already ready for it. I have been built to handle persecution. You know, you know, you know how, how the commercial say, built Texas strong? Well, I've been built godly strong. I am built for persecution, amen. I can handle it right where I am, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We talk about triumphant folk, amen. John chapter 15. Look at verse number 20, John 15, verse number 20. Remember the word that I said unto you, Jesus says, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. So look what Jesus said. Hey, listen, don't think that this is special. You special? You're not greater than the master. He said they persecuted me. Of course they're going to persecute you. Amen. So I, I look, look, I, I'm ready for the persecution. Amen. I'm built, I'm built God strong. Amen. To handle the persecution that comes my way. All right. Watch this. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Y'all going to get excited about this one. Go, go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16. You ready? Look at verse number 7. Proverbs 16, verse 7. Look what it says. When a man's ways please the Lord, he'll make it even his enemies, the ones that's persecuting him, to be at peace with him. Amen. See, triumphant folk, God say, look, I'll make your enemies be quiet. 
You know, I was, I was thinking the other day, I was thinking the other day, I was just, just thinking the other day about, about Joseph. And I was thinking about how he was persecuted. And how he just had to endure some things. You know, uh, his brothers said of, of him, oh, dad, go to dreamer. Y'all remember that? They were persecuting him because God gave him a dream that they would have to bow down. They were going to serve him. And then the Bible says that he dreamed yet another dream. But, 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 but really, they didn't hate him because he had a dream. You know? They were, they, they were jealous because of the favor that daddy gave him. See, see, that coat represented the favor of God. That coat of many colors. That's why the brothers wanted to persecute their brother, their younger brother, because they had, he had daddy's favor on him. Oh, watch this revelation. See, folk won't persecute you because you are the triumphant. They will persecute you because you got daddy's favor on you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Did y'all get that? That boy had to go through something because the favor of God was on him. Amen. But the Bible said he just endured that thing. And out of them all, God delivered. So, so what happened to Joseph? Uh, okay, okay, he got thrown in the pit. Did God deliver him out of that persecution? He got sold into slavery. Did God deliver him out of that situation? He got, he got accused of raping the master's wife. Did he? That was persecution. Did God deliver him out of that situation? Got thrown in jail, amen, for a trumped-up charge. Look, did God deliver him out of that situation? And then the Bible says that God made him. That every time something happened, the favor of God was on him and always had him to rise to the top. See, that's how God does with us because we are triumphant folk. When we find ourselves in trouble, God will raise us up, raise us up, raise us up, raise us up. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this. The, 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 there, there are times when our children do science experiments. And so, so, so I, I, I begin to just meditate on that thing. See, I've been, I've been doing a lot of meditating, praise the Lord. And, and so, so, so God showed me that this, this science project with a, with a ping pong ball. And if you put a ping pong ball inside of a, 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 a liter uh, Coke can bottle, you know, the big liter, and you put water in it, initially the water puts pressure on the ping pong ball. But after the water has subsided, the ping pong rises to the top. See, see, life puts pressure on us. But because we are the triumphant, it always, we always rise to the top. It don't matter what, what it is if we rise up to the top. Because we are the triumphant, amen. <laughs> oh, that, that's a good word, man. That's a good word. That's a good word, man. Amen. He said, but he said, he said he'll make our enemies be at peace with us, amen. Okay, okay. What 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 are some what are some what are some uh uh, contributing factors that causes persecution. Go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Some, some contributing factors to persecution. Mm, mm, mm. Mark chapter 4. Let's begin at verse number 16. Mark chapter 4. Beginning at verse, no, let's start at 14. Let's start at 14. Praise the Lord. The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Underline that, receive it with gladness. I'll highlight it if you have your iPad, receive it with gladness. And have no root in themselves, and so endure for a time. Afterward, when afflictions or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Now, now watch this now. If I get into an environment where it's just a lot of hooping and hollering, and, 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 and no word is taking root in my life, I won't be able to handle persecution because it haven't taken root. And that's why I caution folk, listen, yeah, yeah, it's good to have a good time at church, but look, give me some word. 
So when I face this persecution, I know how to handle it, amen? Don't, don't, just, don't just tickle my fancy, amen? Don't just give me gravy, amen? Give me some meat. I, look, look, any good meat will make its own gravy. Amen. You get a good cut of meat, look, you just put that thing on low, it's going to make its own gravy. The word will make you happy. Look, 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 look. What, what excites me, what gets me all charged up is when I see you taking the word of God, applying it to your life, and you have the victory in your life. Boy, I get excited about that. You talking about hooping in? I, I, that, that's what I hoop. Amen. When I see the victorious lifestyle of believers, because they have applied the word to their lives. Oh, geez, that just made me excited. But if you don't get the word, when persecution comes, you ain't going to know how to handle it. Amen? Secondly, watch this. Could it be that there, there are times when God will allow us to be persecuted in order that his word might be spread abroad. Amen. See, there, there are some times where God will allow you to go through persecution so that you can gain a testimony. See, see, you can't have a testimony unless you have a test. And sometimes God allows us to go through the persecution just so that we could have a testimony so we go tell somebody else of how good God is. Okay, okay, okay. You want to see it? Want to see it? Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because, see, there are some believers who have gotten comfortable. You know, I'm just, I, I, I'm good right where I am, Pastor. I'm, I'm fine right where I am. Where I, am. I, I don't need any more. And look, witness Go, go, go get 10 folk and bring them to church. Oh, I'm above that. Okay. See, the children of Israel got comfortable. Amen. And God had to allow some persecution to come their way in order to get them back to their first priority, which was to witness. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 28 tells us that we're supposed to go throughout the whole world witnessing for the kingdom. And because, because some folk have gotten comfortable and said, well, I'm just going to go to church. I'm not going to go out there in that heat. It's too hot out there. I might sweat my perm out. God might allow persecution to come in order that you might gain a testimony to go tell somebody. Acts chapter 8, look at verse number 1. <clears throat> and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. They, and, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 oh. Who, who went out? Who, who went out? Everybody except who? Everybody except who? Amen. Everybody except the apostles went out. And when they went out, they turned the world upside down. But persecution had to get them out of that comfortable seat. That, that red seat comfortable, man. But this air conditioning is comfortable, man. I'm telling you, I'm tell, I sit down sometimes, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to get up either. But I have to understand that, look, my, my assignment is to go and save the world. Amen? And sometimes God would allow you to go through situations and circumstances to, to get you to a, through a test of persecution so that you could be a witness for him. Woo, praise the Lord. Amen. All right, watch this, watch this, watch this. Oh, okay, okay, watch this. All right, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Who I got to hurry. Who y'all, anybody getting blessed by this? Here's some good news for you. Here's some good news for you. Right here, right here. Who shall, verse 35, 
who, who, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Distress? No. Persecution? No. Famine? No. Nakedness? No. Peril? No. Sword? No. Look, look, look up, look up. No persecution have the ability to separate us from our God. And, and I know sometimes it looks like God ain't with you. God, God said, look, look, I have never left you nor forsaken you. I am with you. And nothing, he said, nothing will be able to separate me from you, you from my love. Nothing. I don't care what you're going through. Nothing. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Who somebody better get happy about that? Nope. Nothing. I, I mean nothing will be able to separate you. Oh, oh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Watch this. Second Corinthians. <laughs> Man, you, you talk about you talk about getting excited. Yeah, well, I just I just have a good time now. Now that everybody's in, at back to school, I I I've been having such a good time. I, I ain't gonna lie, I've been having such a good time at the house, and, and I, I I'll be looking at the at the lesson. I'll be preaching to myself. I'm like, ooh, Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Watch this. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Ah, watch this, watch this. Let's start at verse number 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 7. Y'all ready? Watch this, watch this. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. But this thing I besought the Lord thrice or three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution in distresses for Christ's sake for when I am weak then am I strong what you say Paul said look I was being look 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 I was being persecuted look I asked God to remove this thing three times the first time I asked God I ain't hear nothing second time I asked God about this I ain't hear nothing third time God said my grace is sufficient for you And then Paul said, oh, I got the revelation. I got, I got this revelation. I, I got it. Look, look, instead of me complaining about what I'm going through, instead of me whining about what I'm going through, I need to take pleasure. I, I'm taking pleasure in this thing. I'm taking pleasure in my infirmities. I'm taking pleasure in my reproaches. I'm taking pleasure in my necessity. I'm taking pleasure in my, my persecutions and my distresses. For when I am weak, <laughs> that, that, that's when I'm at my strongest, man. I'm at my strongest when I think I'm at my weakest. Wow. What a revelation, man. What a revelation that when I'm at my weakest moment, that's when I'm... See, that's what the devil don't want you to understand. Amen. He don't want you to have that revelation knowledge that, look, when you're at your most challenging time, that's when you're the strongest, man. That's when you're the strongest. <laughs> That's when you're the strongest. God dog it, man. That's when you're the strongest. Woo-wee. Paul said, man, I, 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 had, I, I, had, I had a change of mind. I had a change of mind because I was, I was whining about this thing. I went to God three times. God, take this. Take it. Take it away. Take it from me, God. And he said, hold up. He said, he said hold up. Hold up. I, I got this revelation that his grace is more than I need. His grace is more than I need. <laughs> look, 
look, look, look how verse 9 in the Amplified reads. But he said to me, my grace, my favor, and loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger, and enables you to bear the trouble manfully. <laughs> he said, in other words, he said, man up. Man up. Man up. Man up. Then, 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 then watch what he said. He said, for my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and completed, and show themselves more effective in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly glory in my weaknesses and infirmities, that the strength and power of Christ, the Messiah, may rest, yes, may pitch a tent over and dwell upon me. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Get, get this, get this, get this, get this. He say, he say it's going to rest and pitch a tent over me. Okay, okay, okay. When, if you ever went camping, the, the first time you go camping, you're not equipped for the camp. Amen? Sometimes, sometimes, I, I, you know, hear folk talk, they go camping, and all they bring is just a, a sleeping bag and, and, and no tent. Well, they learn very quick, without any cover, the mosquitoes going to eat you up. Okay? But see, when you, when you pitch a tent, it covers you from all outside mess. Mosquitoes and frogs and all that kind of stuff. It covers you. It keeps all that stuff out. And what God was saying, look, my grace will cover you. It, I will pitch a tent over you. And I will keep all that outside stuff away from you. Okay, 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 okay. Y'all, y'all, y'all remember, y'all remember, y'all remember growing up, you know, because we, we didn't live in houses like we live in now. But, but, but back in the day, back in the day, you know, we used to have what they call screen doors. Y'all remember that? You know? And, and the screen door was designed to keep all the flies, everything out. And I remember, I remember my grandmother used to say, keep that door, keep that screen door closed, boy. You letting them, you letting them flies in here. You mess with her sweet potato pot, the flies flying all over. Mess with her, no, she said, keep, close that screen door. Now, watch this, watch this. It had enough opening to allow the breeze to come in. And, and, and look, look, grandma used to have a, a screen door on the front door and a screen door on the back. And she would put a fan in the window. <laughs> Boy, you talk about a cool breeze. You didn't, you didn't need an air conditioning system. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you did need a blanket, praise the Lord. Amen. And look, look, you just allowed God to just blow through the house. Okay. It was more than just refreshing you with his air. Listen to this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. But by allowing both screen doors to be open, uh, you know, the doors to be open with the screen doors, and the wind to blow through, it allowed your house to get rid of the oak dirt. <laughs> watch this now, watch this, watch this. When God places a tent around us, we still get the breeze of his glory. But it also allows the... <laughs> oh, I'm getting excited. I'm about to calm, I'm about to calm myself down, praise the Lord. Woo, woo, Jesus. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, let me, let me, let me, okay, I got, I got a few more minutes. Let me give y'all these last, last few things, okay? Here's, here's a plan of action, plan of action to handle persecution. Number one, know that persecution cannot be avoided. It's inevitable. Amen? You're going to go through persecution. It is inevitable if you're living godly in Christ Jesus that you're going to suffer persecution. <clears throat> Number two, learn how to endure the hardship. Amen? Learn to endure the hardship. <clears throat> Number three, resist the temptation to quit. 
See, see, when you're going through your persecution, that's when you want to quit. You got to resist that temptation to quit. Amen? The Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Just like you resist that, you got to resist that temptation to quit. Yeah. Number four, be secure in your position in God. We are in Christ Jesus. That's your position. You are a new creation. That's your position. There is no condemnation on you. That is your position. Nothing separates you from the love of God. That is your position. We are one body in Christ Jesus. That is your position. And you are triumphant people in Christ Jesus. That is your position. Know your position. Number next. <clears throat> Never dwell on evil reports. Never dwell on evil reports. <clears throat> Number next. The only acceptance that you need is from God. I hear you. <laughs> That's the only acceptance that you need. Okay, let me close out with this. Now, I'm, I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to make a statement. Then I'm going I'm to close out with a scripture. And that's going to be the next number next. Okay? The, I'm going to go ahead and make the statement. Strengthen your resolve to win. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the number next. Strengthen your resolve to win. Now, I'm going to give you a scripture in just a second after I make this statement. When the blessings start to flow and the benefits of your godly walk manifest, persecution does not have quite the impact it used to have. Did y'all hear what I said? When the blessings start to flow and the benefits of your godly walk manifest, persecution does not have quite the impact it used to have. All right, all right. Let me input this last scripture. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. <laughs> Anybody get blessed but me tonight? I'm, I'm just, I'm just, whew, I'm a, praise the Lord. Isaiah 54. Look at verse number 17. <laughs> when I'm getting persecuted, when my haters show up, <laughs> verse 17, Isaiah 54, verse 17, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. But watch this, no weapon that's formed against me shall ever prosper. I don't care what kind of persecution I'm going through, Jada. Look, no weapon that's formed against me shall ever prosper. Look, I don't care what kind of test I'm going through. No weapon that's formed against me shall ever prosper. I don't care what kind of challenge I face tomorrow. No weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Look, I don't care what they, what they say about me. No weapon. Because I am the triumphant. I am the triumphant people. No weapon formed against me. I, I, I am the triumph. You are the triumphant, amen? Amen. Look, look, look. They could try stuff, but it ain't going to prosper. Amen? They, they could put schemes and plans together, but it ain't going to prosper. It ain't going to prosper. Why? Because I'm the triumphant, amen? I overcome all my persecution. God delivers me out of all of that mess. <laughs> what you say, Pastor Sharp? Amen. I received that. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I, all that mess. Praise the Lord. So, 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 okay. I'm going to close out. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Thanks be to God. Always. 
through persecution, through afflictions, through challenges, all of it always calls me to triumph. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen.